What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about the update we received for Modern Warfare 3 today. So these changes are going to be including Warzone, Zombies, and Multiplayer. Of course, today is December the 14th, 2023. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. And first of all, let's talk about some of the global changes. So this is for stability and performance. They addressed an issue experienced by some players that caused items previously unlocked to become unavailable to equip. For Assault Rifles, the Ram 7, the Speedway V5 short barrel attachment is now available to equip in the Gunsmith. The Breacher Drone, the improved impact detection to prevent inflicting more explosive damage to players than was intended. For customization, now they fix these things, uh, like I said, globally, so this is going to be for all uh, game modes, so Warzone, Multiplayer, or Zombies. The Crimson Fate and Carbon Fate laser attachment skins will no longer appear as default skins when equipped to shotguns. Players who purchase the GGEZ Weapon Vault Bundle will now be able to use those customizations on uh, the integrated optic attachment. The animated emblems are now properly rewarded upon reaching prestige levels 1 to 5. And it says, of course, in the coming days, they'll retro active uh kind of they're going to retroactively grant these items to players who met the requirements prior to today's fix and the storm enders priceless and interstellar reward emblems will now display the correct emblem art just for war zone for strongholds a black site key will only be rewarded the first time you complete a stronghold and captures by other squads will now not reward a key either so you're not gonna be able to get a key if you capture this uh stronghold as another squad or if you have completed that stronghold more than once. So for resurgence redeployment, the resurgence redeployment mechanic will now be disabled at the end of circle three and public events have been disabled in circles one and two and the chance for a public event to occur in the late circles has been adjusted. For weapon tuning today, uh, it says looking at you know, weapons and attachments on offer, some outliers were performing above expectations. They have taken immediate steps to mitigate them to support a healthy engagement experience throughout your holiday break. So first thing they touched on, of course, was the DG-56. Even though it has been nerfed once, it was still very, very strong. The max damage now has been reduced to 32, down from 40. The FR-556, they reduced the max damage to 35, down from 43. The BASB, the max damage was reduced from 35, uh, to 35, down from 39. And the mid damage reduction was reduced to 25 down from 27. And all three of those weapons I know people use in pretty much multiplayer and Warzone. And I know the DG and the BASB were pretty dominant in Warzone and they were very dominant in multiplayer. So now those should be, you know, kind of getting a little bit closer to being in line with some of the other weapons in game. We'll kind of have to wait and see after we all play and get some testing in to see if these guns are actually still really good and kind of outperforming the other guns or not because like i said the dg already received one update and one kind of nerf but it was still very very powerful so we'll have to see how that dg the fr556 and the bas perform today when it comes to handguns the core uh, 45 the akimbo version max damage was reduced to 30 down from 45 and the akimbo renetti's the max damage was reduced to 22 from 33 and the headshot multiplier was reduced to 1.2 down from 1.4. When it comes to marksman rifles, the max damage of the DM56 was reduced to 41 from 50 and the mid damage was reduced from 37 down from 39. The KVD enforcer headshot multiplier was reduced to 1.8 down from 2.2. The headshot multiplier of the MTZ interceptor was reduced from 1.5 down from 2. And the TYR Akimbo max damage was reduced to 70 down from 120. The DM56, the KVD, and the MTZ Interceptor are kind of interesting to me considering I'm not sure if a lot of you have been using marksman rifles. I'm not sure how they perform in Warzone. I'm not a big Warzone player, but I do know in multiplayer, I feel like the marksman rifles are a little bit lacking at times. I mean, maybe the servers you're in or, or whatever the case could be. I feel like I get a lot of hit markers with them personally. Uh, but a lot of you may not have that experience, but they did nerf all three of those marksman rifles. Like I said, plus that TYR 
uh, revolver, which I did not realize the damage of uh, max was 120. That is absolutely insane. No wonder the thing was so good when running it in a Kimbo. For the shotguns, the Haymaker, the max damage was reduced to 36 down from 52. We all know the Haymaker is really, really good. So that was good to see, in my opinion, because you don't want to have a shotgun that can compete with an AR or a sub at closer and not, you know, a little bit further than close range. So that's probably a good thing. Some machine guns, the Fennec 45, the max damage was reduced from tw to 22 down from 25. Headshot multiplier was reduced from 1.25 down from 1.35. And the lower torso multiplier was reduced to 1 down from 1.1. I've not seen a lot of people use the Fennec 45. I have heard it is good, that it is good in multiplayer and in Warzone. Personally, I've not been using it a lot. I've been trying to stick to a lot of the Modern Warfare 3 guns, considering I've already used a lot of the MW2 guns last year, all year. But if you are a fan of the Fennec 45, unfortunately, it did get a little bit of a nerf today. Of course, for audio, it says rebalance first person and enemy footstep audio. So since the launch of Season 1, they've been actively listening to player feedback regarding our, uh, audio concerns in Warzone, especially related to footsteps. This initial update is aimed at addressing part of these concerns and enhancing the overall experience before we head into the holidays. We're making changes such as this. There's a complex mix of variables they need to meticulously look at and consider. One of the primary factors is to consider the fidelity of the experience across our titles to avoid a large gap between Warzone multiplayer and zombies. Beyond that, changes to things like occlusion, fall off distance, first person versus third person balance, or specific perk mechanics. Uh, mechanics can have a ripple effect due to sheer number of interacting overlapping sounds in a battle royale match. Please know that they're committed to ongoing improvements to ensure that players can fully immerse themselves in the game. And there's a lot of complaints about sound audio in Warzone. When it comes to multiplayer now, of course, I think zombies really sound wise not is not that important because footsteps anyway. Uh, other sounds, you know, is definitely important. But footstep sounds, I don't think is that important in zombies. But when you're playing something, you know, competitive against other real players like Warzone and multiplayer, you want to be able to hear the enemy. You don't want to be able to hear your teammates' footsteps louder. But at the same time, you don't want the enemy footsteps to be too loud. And we all know in the beta for uh, Modern Warfare 3, the footsteps were really loud. We we'll kind of have to wait and see how they have adjusted this. Is it going to be, you know, more on the quiet side, more on the loud side? It just says rebalance the first person and enemy footstep audio. They did not say if how how they tweaked it. If they made certain things louder, you know, if you hit certain materials on the ground, if it was going to be louder, or if it was going to be just louder or quieter overall. So we'll have to wait and see till we get in game. But I'm going to be kind of curious to see how this gets adjusted going for, uh, forward. As we all know, sometimes footstep sounds get adjusted pretty much every update, and it's either they're really really loud or really too quiet and it's kind of hard to get that happy medium a lot of times, in my opinion. For bug fixes, they fixed an issue that allowed uh, players to get stuck inside locked buildings that should otherwise be inaccessible. They fixed additional issues with incorrect text appearing on challenges. And they fixed collision issues with very elements across, uh, of course, Warzone, allowing players to exploit, peek, or shoot through them. When it comes to UI fixes for multiplayer, the kill column on the scoreboard will now track properly in war mode. Conversion kit attachment slot for certain weapons will no longer appear locked, despite that you have already met the requirements. Uh, a blueprint pre preview will no longer kick you back to the menu, along when using a controller or, and hovering over Santa's Slayground Battle Pass sector it will not kick you back to the menu, and clicking the View Bundle button on the Battle Pass will not kick you back to the player menu. Uh, the multiplayer menu and this is a good thing i think the worst one i experienced was uh when exiting a blueprint preview it always kicked me out and that was very very annoying having to go back to the multiplayer menu and come back in so uh, luckily those three things have been fixed it says challenges that require enemy equipment to be destroyed will no longer progress upon the destruction of the following uh will now progress excuse me upon the destruction of the following field upgrade so if you have an acquire a requirement that you know needs you to destroy enemy equipment for a challenge, you can now destroy things like the ACS, the comm scrambler, the deployable cover, the med box, the munitions box, the portable radar, the suppression mine, the tactical camera, the tactical insert, and the trophy system. That will now give you progress toward those challenges. They also implemented a measure to prevent illicit usage of the ray gun outside of supported modes. There was a lot of news of hackers getting the ray gun in multiplayer 
where it was not intended to be in just base multiplayer that has now been fixed they also fixed some issues in operation spearhead where players were un, uh, you know kind of getting outside of the map exploiting the map getting under the map those have been fixed uh, for gunfight in a private match split screen play will no longer cause a dev error for search and destroy addressing an issue causing unintended xp rates for various match events and for play uh, playlists they increase the team deathmatch and kill confirmed score limits in certain limited time playlists so 12v12 is now 150 10v10 is now 125 and small maps are now 125. Uh, for private matches the cdl uh, rule set has been updated to competitive settings version 1.0 and the training course has returned allowing players to learn basic movements and combat skills Another thing they did today, of course, was with the Ghost TV camo perk. Players can now be stationary for two seconds before the anti-radar effects are disabled. That was one big issue with Ghost TV camo. Before we had the new vest that came into the game, it's kind of like the old Ghost where you're always going to be off the radar, even if you're sitting still. Ghost TV camo is kind of that new school Ghost. You have to be moving for it to be active. But the annoying thing was if you stopped to maybe heal up for a second, reload your weapon, maybe duck behind cover if you saw an enemy. As soon as you stopped, you kind of came onto the radar. Uh, you, you were being shown on the radar. So the big issue there was uh, players were kind of complaining that they should not be showing up on the radar that quickly. So now there is a two second delay before you show up on that radar. For zombies, they fixed a few of the uh, mission issues in Act 4 and also some of the contract issues and some of the enemy issues they were having where players were having problems uh, you know, or, nor, or some bugs they were experiencing with certain things inside of zombies. Also some stability improvements for PC. They resolved a, a specific crash players encountered at the start of season one and they added various crash and stability fixes for PC as well. And that is all for today's patch notes. There's a lot of stuff going on between you know all three modes, zombies, warzone, and multiplayer. But leave me a comment with your thoughts and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.